Hello walkers and welcome to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We are on Sherman and 6th Street. And that's downtown-ish area, but we're gonna actually go down around the lake first because I think the lighting's gonna be better when we come back up Sherman's Avenue uh, to see. <coughs> Pardon me. The uh, recent smoke has gotten me a little congested. <coughs> In any case, Coeur d'Alene. Well, first of all, let's do this. My name is Henry, and I will be your proxy walker, your virtual travel guide today, as we explore just a little bit of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So let's flip you back around and we'll get started. Um, it's a cool little town. Well, first of all, please like, subscribe, and comment. I love getting your comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so if you like these videos. It does help us out quite a bit with YouTube, um, getting the word out and their algorithm and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> cool little fountain here. But it is 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius, about 6 p.m. Pacific time, which is the local time here. And it is a lovely, lovely evening. Um, as I said, I, ha I have driven past Coeur d'Alene, and it's, it's situated on a lake. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, but uh, I haven't actually been down here, and it's so cool. I'm loving it. Got a few high-rises. Um, if we have time, I'll go back into some of this leafy neighborhood area, which is really pretty. Um, but we're starting out at this park, this lakeside park. Um, little bit about Coeur d'Alene. It is named after the Coeur d'Alene people, which I believe means heart of the all. They lived in this area, hunter-gatherers. Uh, and then Europeans came in about 1878. Um, William Tecumseh Sherman sighted a fort here on the north side of the lake uh, at that year, called Fort Sherman. Nothing egotistical about that. Um, and it's got about 55,000 people as of 2020. So it's in the panhandle of uh, Idaho, third largest city. And uh, I think that's right, so that's about it. But look at this awesome park, you guys. It is fantastic. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, often abbreviated CDA. You'll see a lot of that on signage here. I'm not gonna go over to the playground because I don't like filming kids. Um, but I do want to show you this awesome park. We'll go down by the lake and then we will make our way back up Sherman, which seems to be kind of the main drag through Coeur d'Alene. <clears throat> and there is, seems to be a farmer's market or some sort of market going on here tonight. It's pretty nice. Uh, and it looks like we're headed down to it. I just saw the part up um on the main area up there but now i'm seeing all sorts of tents and hearing music so maybe there's some sort of festival going on i'll try to find out a little bit about that what a great park and what a great evening i guess i'm on a bike path which is cool in and of itself I don't know if we'll have to talk over the music too much here. Um, there is a bike path that ends up somewhere near here. Uh, the Trail of the Coeur uh, We saw a little bit of it over by Wallace in an earlier walk. Check that walk out. <clears throat> Loving all the e-bikes I'm seeing as well. That's a lot of fun. I really I want one, I, not for any particular uh, need. I don't need one, but I sure would like, they look fun, they look cool, and they have so much potential to change things. So this is a ticketed entry, but I don't know what for. Some kind of event. <laughs> the part up by the town is free, at least, I mean, they just closed off the, uh, the street.
distance up there. You can see the high rises. There's like four or five of them down here. They seem a bit incongruous, but I suspect there's a lot of money in this area. Very uh, tourist oriented destination with the lake, which is about 24 miles long. And just sort of, I think it's a reservoir, but I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> the mountains come right down to the edge. So I've seen a couple signs for this thing live after five, being the uh, <clears throat> the music event. Brandon, you gotta wait. love all this grass. It's so strange to see so much moisture over here. <clears throat> Pardon me again. But we're going to walk down to the marina. This is McEwen Park, apparently. You can see the sign here. Everybody out having a good time. People getting a little bit of a freebie. You can see the lake out here. This is some sort of hotel, I think. Maybe it's condos. I don't know. We're gonna go check it out. I mean, I believe you got a sort of a trail system over here. Although it does say extreme fire danger currently, so despite the irrigated lawn here. Uh, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of sculptures of this sort of cartoonish moose around. I think that must be a maybe it's an icon. If you guys have any comments, please let me know in the YouTube comments section. I, uh, I welcome any corrections that I might have gotten wrong or any additional information I might have missed or places I should have gone. You know, as long as it's gently put forward, I appreciate them. So I'm gonna go over here and show you this moose sculpture. You can see the difference between the grass and then this hillside with uh, ponderosa pines and stuff. There's all kinds of music getting played around here. Here's our friend the moose. Mudgy and Millie the moose. Mudgy Moose Trail must be Something, if you guys know anything about the Mudgy Moose Trail, let me know. This is a, just a marina. Looks like there's a tour boat coming in there in the distance. You can see the mountains rising right up there, over here on the corner there. There's people jumping in off the rocks. I mean, you can see how this would be an awesome place to uh, come recreate, come spend a week or two in summer. We'll continue on here. Somebody's playing some music over there. <clears throat> this is the Lake Side Bar and Grill. There we walked from about four blocks down to the lake, looking for a place to that we were going to get food and drinks. And there are so many breweries and tap houses here. So many restaurants. Uh, we stopped at Unchained Tap House. It was pretty good. And right next to an Italian restaurant, a gelato place, ice cream, toy stores. I mean, it's got it all. Look, looking back, man, this is some nice light to be out here today.
If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Maybe other viewers will share their knowledge or their memories and uh, with all of us. Or maybe I'll look it up and try to answer it for you. Kind of reminds me of a California beach town. It's a pretty cool heron sculpture over here. Let's go take a look at that. That's really nice. That's in memory of Madge Stormo Gibson, MD. little funny uh, how we have this propensity to try and liken a place to another place, fix ourselves in space and time. Immediately thinking of Pueblo here, I think, thought earlier of a California beach town. Pueblo, the riverfront area, has a lot of great walking paths and that sort of thing. I did a walk there in, I think it was February or March. I guess we'll have to go around this condo resort place. Luckily, it's not too bad of a thing to do. And then we'll cut back up. The plan is to cut back up and walk up uh, Sherman Avenue, which is where all the, not all, but a lot of the fun nightlife seems to be going on. Love these dandelion sculptures too. <clears throat> That's fun. This is the corner of front and can't quite see the it's Coeur d'Alene Plaza, but the street sign. Third and Front Street. And the Continental Trail. I suspect that's part of a bike path. So I'm gonna skew left. I guess this place is called the Coeur d'Alene Golf and Spa Resort. I will tell you that when I was looking for hotel rooms in this area, they were not cheap. But you go 20 miles over to Spokane Valley, and they're about a fifth of the cost. I'm gonna go this way. I don't know if something, some other big event is happening this week. Maybe. I don't know what the deal with that is. Kind of a cool building of some sort. Getting a family photo with the drone. 
above us. That was fun. Curious what this building is over here. Hagadon Corporation. Hmm. Got a boardwalk bar. Looks like uh, this looks like fun. I'll take a picture of you later. I don't know if you can see it because of the sunlight. Look at the mountains out there. Pretty, pretty sweet. Pretty beautiful. Okay, so there's another park that keeps going, but I am gonna turn around, get a quick shot of a museum over there, which I don't know what it is. And hopefully can look that up. And then I'm gonna head up Sherman again. Not again, but head up Sherman and show you guys the downtown. Now, there's gonna be a lot of noise, a lot of music playing. Hopefully YouTube will not get the wrong idea that I'm somehow trying to steal that music <clears throat> and not ding us, but I may not talk quite as much. All right, guys. And I'll sort of zigzag my way up, probably. Look at the awesome light. My colors. Oh. So nice. <clears throat> so I didn't really put it together until just now, but uh, my assumption is Sherman Avenue is with Fort Sherman and William Tecumseh Sherman. Did not click until just now. All right, coming up on 2nd Street. Look at this whole bunch of lake cruises you can book. Nice little lake mural there. I'm going to spin around because we don't have the sun in their eyes right now. Show you the lake from this angle. And you can see the mountains in the distance and there, sort of the depth of all that is rolling away. Really pretty and awesome place. And now you're going to see the crowds of people that are here. Sorry, I, I'm going to stop and show you things along the way. That fish is so fun to me. A little sculpture. Awesome. Century 21 real estate. Here's one of the many, many e-bikes I've seen around. Love seeing those. Here's another one. So Unchained is back there underneath those flowers. 
Beer was good, food was okay. One of many um, ice cream places on the corner up there. Of course, gelato here. Hi there. Might have to stop there on the way back. I was intrigued to see some of these Sotheby's listings, but I didn't see any prices, which sort of tells you all you need to know. There's another moose across the corner there. Coming up on 3rd Street. Wait! I will wait briefly. Let's see, and maybe we'll come back down that street. I don't know, we'll see what, what our time is looking like. And across, because why not? A lot of sort of artwork, clothing, but clothing boutiques. Here's a jeweler, and then I think rustic. Well, that's just a restaurant. Piano bar. Kind of a little um, pocket park over there. A couple buildings not there and left room for a park. It's kind of nice. <laughs> And then the Beacon Pub coming up on 4th Street here. An awesome chill evening. <clears throat> Give you a look down there while we wait for the light. It looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and cross. The Moose Lounge. <clears throat> Chalice Brewing. Zoom past here. Coming up here, there's a bluegrass band playing on the corner during the uh, um, little market going on here. Buck 99 Bluegrass. I love some bluegrass. See the side of the market over there? Love it. Fine brewed, I thought was maybe a brewery, but it's a coffee shop. Still pretty fun. You could spend a week just working your way down, looking at all, eating at all the restaurants and the bars. It smells awesome here. <clears throat> 
the beer house, and then Fire Artisan Pizza, which is actually a chain. But look at these. Somebody's taken these gourds and painted them. I don't know if that's local or somewhere out of Asia, but they're kind of fun. All right, so uh, we are back to where we started, but we're not done. I'm going to keep going in a little ways. The crafted tap house and kitchen looks and smells pretty amazing. Let's see what's going on up there. Awesome outdoor dining. And we're going to continue on to the east. Cross Fifth. And then we're just going to go up here into this neighborhood a little bit because I want to show you that. Uh, we drove through here on the way into town. And then um, we'll head back down a block over and show you over there, which is sort of looks like when I glance over there, kind of a mix between uh, shops and restaurants and neighborhood. So I'm kind of interested to see that as well. Restoration Healthcare. Hmm. You've got these super fancy, probably really expensive buildings. And then you've got Resort City Inn and the Flamingo Hotel, which are probably just hanging on because what else are they going to do? They probably make a ton of money. So this is 7th, and I think we're going to go, I just want to show you this hotel here. Nothing wrong with it, it's just basic, right? It's not the fancy multi-hundred dollar place like some of these others. <clears throat> and then the Flamingo Hotel up here on the right. Gas appears to be $3.48 a gallon for the low octane. If you're curious about that sort of thing. And here's the Flamingo Motel. Again, nothing wrong with it. Looks perfectly nice, but it's definitely not the luxury hotel down by the lake. There's a row of um, townhouses up here too that I want to show you. They look pretty new, probably pretty expensive, and uh, but really nice too. I like them. I'm sure folks can find things to critique with them, but I like them. I think partly just because there's so so much great mature so many great mature trees in this area. And you guys know how much I like that. It's these ones over here on the left. I don't want to film these. There's some folks out eating dinner. I don't want to be weird or anything, but I am going to film a little bit before we get there and then I'll film the hotel across the street. Look at that, very Nordic, very simple, but elegant, plenty of outdoor space, well designed, you know, efficient. And then, of course, you've got this elegant mansion across the way there. It's the Blackwell Hotel. Uh, looks like someone got married. Congratulations, Joanna and Jake. All right, coming up on 9th Street. And I think what we'll do is we'll make a left here, although 
beautiful shady old neighborhood there more row houses there <clears throat> we're gonna make our way back a block or two wend our way about it's a cute little Frenchie oh, excuse me how you doing? good how are you guys right Sweet little dog. <clears throat> Somebody got his little kid in their little dirt bike. That's fun. Wow, it gets so quiet. This is Lakeside Drive. I'm gonna cross over. But you can see, sorry to swip this around, how bucolic this place is. I think that's the right word. Maybe not. But lovely. And then look at these houses over here. Well, these are nice. You know, I don't quite like them as much as the other ones. They're a little standard. And then you've got some some more houses going in over here. An old cedar tree here. Massive. And I think I'm going to loop around this way a block just because I want to duck back into this neighborhood and see what it's like. Looks like there's some apartments over there and it's interesting to see such high-end houses intermixed with such lesser end houses I think that's a good way of putting it it's a good way to have it mixed use diverse place this is a pretty cool house here. Love a good porch. Love it. Looks like by the chart art walk, chalk art, sorry, on the sidewalk. Got some kids there. Oh, this is so nice. Back in here. Some condos or townhouses over there. <clears throat> It's like a different world over here. I love communities like this. Um, Baltimore's a little bit like it in, not East Baltimore, but um, sections of Baltimore. Manhattan's a little bit like this. Portland's a little bit like this, where you have a residential area and then a little commercial center in, in it, and there'll be a couple restaurants, a couple bars, a bakery, a coffee shop, kind of what you need, with the exception of maybe a big grocery store. And then, you know, a mile over, you'll have another one. So you get these walkable communities that have a life of their own that don't require getting on an interstate highway to go to a restaurant, you know. Uh, it doesn't require going to a strip mall. Oh, this is nice. Uh, I suspect it does require a lot of money, though. So there's that. Look at this house over here. I think that is either for sale or an office building. It's kind of a cool little church down that way. This is seventh. Did I tell you what the street on this? Cordeline 
Avenue. Okay, so it looks like this is listed under Cold War, Coldwell Banker uh, for sale. So somebody look that up and put in the comments what the price is. I'm guessing high, which is fine. I'm also a bit curious about what the smoke situation has been like here previously <clears throat> this year. It's been kind of, we had a couple good days, but kind of horrendous in Livingston. And I suspect it's been similar here. Coming back to Lakeside Avenue. Not sure I'd want to live this on this street. I mean, you're close to the action, but well, I guess other people wouldn't either. Otherwise, that would have been sold. Coming up on 6th Street. A little church or former church. First Presbyterian Church. I think I'm gonna cross over. Looks like uh, it would be a little more interesting over there. Somebody's got some live music in the back. <coughs> yeah. Guess so maybe I'll wait just a moment. Bulwark Barber, currently closed. Looks like the kind of place you get your beard oiled. Here's the uh, other end of that market. we cross fifth. And this is Cordelline Coffee. Every bike I see now, I'm checking to see if it's an e-bike.
It's kind of a neat sculpture here. It's different stones. Salt and pepper. Interesting. Crossing 4th Street. A couple different places for public parking. Another ice cream store, Oppie's Ice Cream. And then that looks like a coffee shop over there. Across Canton Asian restaurant to my left. Just a bake shop. Whoops. Bake shop. You hit the sweet spot. Nice. It's a Japanese restaurant over there. This is interesting. Looks like there may be an old train depot up on the right. See the yin yang of the Northern Pacific icon. Cross over here. The Olympia Greek restaurant. Oh, yeah. It's like office space now. It's a much quieter part of downtown here. <clears throat> Again, I apologize for my congestion. A little cantina and another coffee shop across the way. Toro Viejo and Calypso's Coffee Company. Apartments and condos.
So this lakeside park is apparently called Independence Point. And we're going to take a look real quick down there. Get another view of it. Oops. Wait. That big boat. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I think I just saw a white nationalist sticker on a post, and I was thinking about showing you, but I really don't want to promote anything to do with that, uh, and so I'm not going to do that. But I am going to go out to this point out here and take a look at that. Oh my gosh, you should see, I'm going to show you, because so you will see, the number of people waiting to get onto these boats. We'll go down there first. All right, so I don't know if these are party boats or if they're just tour boats. I suspect that you can get drinks and just hang out in the lake, but who knows, really? But I'm gonna get a better angle of that. <clears throat> Hopefully I don't get in trouble for the music. Here's another one of those moose sculptures. You can hear the bass pumping. Looks like they're gonna have live music on one of them, but you can see all the people out there getting onto their boats, getting ready to party, have a good time. Hope you guys had a good time today. This is going to be the end of the walk here at this waterfront. You can see, you can sit on the steps. Over there, you've got a beach and an awesome park to hang out at. Um, anyway, let us know what you think about this walk in the comment section below. Like and subscribe and comment. Tell your friends. Come back again next time. We will see you again soon. I'm not sure from where, but uh, we'll figure it out. Look at this little mouse on here. I didn't notice that. Um, but uh, in any case, wherever you're going, whenever you come, keep on stepping. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye, guys.